Hello and welcome to Straight Talk, Supply Chain Insights, the podcast for your supply chain leader who is on the go and wants to be in the know. And now, your host, Laura Ciceri. Hi, this is Laura Ciceri. Welcome to Straight Talk with Supply Chain Insights. This is the podcast where we cover what's happening in the supply chain space, direct you know, hard hitting advice for the supply chain leader. Today I wrote about vaccine to vaccination for the COVID-19 response. Great headline news last week as we look at the COVID-19 situation, which we all know that COVID-19 and the pandemic has wrecked havoc on supply chains and that we're sitting at home on Zoom meetings and we'd like to be back in the offices and we want business as normal, but we can't really have business as normal until we get uh, the pandemic under control. Well, headline news, Biden formed the task force of distinguished scientists to go after really coronavirus strategy. In parallel, Pfizer announced that its vaccine is 90% effective and it's moving forward to the next step. So the article I wrote is that a vaccine to vaccination requires supply chain innovation. That, you know, it's not a good enough to just have a vaccine in a box. We need a shot in the arm. And so as we think about what needs to happen for COVID-19 vaccinations, we've got a lot to think about because the vaccine has to be shipped at minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So think about, you know, South Arctic temperatures and it's got a 10 day shelf life, right? So that's the shelf life of a bread supply chain. And usually a supply chain takes a day to ship and it needs serialization and it needs tracking and it needs the ability to track multi doses. So it's not one dose, it's two doses and the dosages look like they have to come from the same supplier and they have to be administered, you know, very tightly against a window of the dosage schedule. So we need to track who gets what doses and uh, the efficacy and the 10 day shelf life plus the minus 90 degree Fahrenheit conditions really means that we need to think hard about packaging. So as we think about, you know, the design of the package, it has to be suitable to keep the item cold because the life cycle, which we think is 10 days at minus 90, is strongly affected by combination of time and temperature. So all of that has to be tracked and we're gonna be shipping with dry ice and we're expecting 20 to 30% dry ice shortage. And you might say, well, why do I care? Well, dry ice is really important for contactless sh shipping for frozen goods. So whether you're shipping meat or fish or ice cream or blood plasma, et cetera, all of those things that ship normally with dry ice are gonna struggle to get dry ice. Secondly, you know, the dry ice supply chains going by air and we're down 35% on air. So we're going to be talking about private fleet for air. Thirdly, the vaccine has got to be merged with kits for administration. And McKesson, which operates 26 distribution centers in the United States, actually has got to work on merge and transit of those kits, which are needles and masks and vaccination cards with the vaccine to be able to track what happens. And uh, that's gonna require a lot of logistics because the vaccine with the 10 day window is going to have to be shipped just as it's manufactured. And the kits are gonna to need to be merged based upon state jurisdictions against what needs to happen in terms of administration. But I think a bigger issue and one that's really fraught with issues is who gets this vaccination? Pfizer is a global pharmaceutical manufacturer. We're having a US discussion with Project Warp Speed. And unless we get COVID-19 controlled globally, we can't really control this pandemic 
So who should get this vaccine? And what is the role of a pharmaceutical company like Pfizer in making that decision? For a 10 day life cycle and this kind of supply chain to be effective, we have to have politically free flows. We need clear destination origin, shipping instructions. And this is so mired in politi political turmoil and lack of clear governance about who's going to get this vaccine. I think a lot of Americans think that, you know, we can just pull the handle on the Defense Act and, you know, be able to scoop up this vaccine, but I'm like, not so fast, right? You know, this is a much bigger issue for the new task force to really talk about and work through. And, you know, what should be shipped globally? How do we design the last mile? So, you know, the countries need to have last mile capabilities or the vaccine's not gonna be effective. And we need to think about is, it appropriate to ship based upon what's happening with hospitalizations, what's happening with age groups. There's a whole lot to think through. So straight talk with Supply Chain Insights. The road from a vaccine to vaccination requires supply chain innovation. This COVID-19 release of the vaccine is unlike any other supply chain that we've put forward and I know there are lots of supply chain leaders that are ready for the challenge. I just hope we recognize what those issues are so that we can fall forward and get this right versus what happened with the management of PPE at the first of the pandemic where we didn't set the right balls and motions and we let the state struggle and compete against themselves and we struggled on inbound logistics. Let's learn from the past Supply chain leaders takes a village. COVID-19, vaccine to vaccination, supply chain innovation. Until next time, this is Laura.